Let us designate number 8 as a crown, which is the crown by generic copy. I'm going to select the material Vita Real Life and click OK. The first we're going to start by generic copy folder. Now I'd like to take um, five six teeth. So when I design my crown, I make sure it fits with the rest of them. When I go on the buckle, on the facial of number eight. I want to make sure that um, I won't see any black to the lingual area. I always check my model before I proceed with the preparation folder. So make sure that I have all the data necessary to proceed. So this preparation folder, I make sure it's when I scan, I'm right at the part of the insertion. I can see all my margins. Take the rest of the images. Hi everyone, my name is Gregory. Today is presentation number eight, real life a crown. So the patient presents to my office. Um, in my office, uh, number eight it was discolored. She had it for several years, and we discussed that, uh, several times. Let's change the crown, um, she, but the patient was afraid. It's a uh, grinding her teeth. It's uh, uh, what the color she, she probably should get. It will will be fit. Uh, will match with the rest of the teeth. So it was uh, the discussion was going on probably for five six years. So finally, she decided um, to ch uh, to prep this to prep the tooth number eight and put a crown. So before I started, let, let me explain um, the, how, why did I choose real life. If I look at number eight, um, a number, I'm sorry, number nine and number ten, we can see the the hell of, of uh, dentin, I mean the body shade. And um, when I look at the materials, probably the most um, uh, suitable material here it's going to be real life. So I can adjust the hell of the dentin, where should I place and Probably it's going to be best match um, for number uh, for number nine. You can see here that it's um, the lingual side uh, of this number uh, eight, and um, uh, if we're trying to preserve the cingulum, it's already been destroyed, and there's a lot of decay underneath. And um, there's an uh, old composite we have to remove, and um, also the stump of this uh, crown is going to be very dark. So I want to make sure that when I deliver my uh, crown it will block the the darkness of the stamp shade. This uh, x-ray you can see on x-ray the root canal is done, there is no PEP, there is no infection but we also see that it's, um, the composite film on, on the mesial side and um, number nine has also deficiency on, on the composite so we have to change it also. So what, what I did because I didn't have a markup um, or wax up of this number uh, number eight. So what I did, I did uh, a talk of uh, flowable composite and um, did the um, uh, markup right in the patient's mouth. And then I I scanned for uh, for my restorative stage. So this is a prep of this tooth and uh, what I was done is um, I removed the composite material from the lingual side all the all the re restorative material being placed on number eight and also I removed part of the good aperture been sticking out on the um, coronal portion of those and also there was a lot of decay inside it's um, uh, I had to remove it and also it was a lot of discoloration so I did a little bit internal bleaching on this number eight um, I placed fiber core uh, post material by Relax, um, cemented with the Unisem 2, and then put a core build up and prep the tools. So, this is a facial view, and um, 
this is uh, from the lingual side. I also prep a little bit um, down to the gingiva in the proximal, so make sure so I can close the um, the black triangles between number eight and nine and and seven and eight. The image image has been taken. It's um in we what I usually do is um, I also want to check how my prep uh, fits uh, to the biocopy images. If I make the model a little bit bigger, I want to make sure it's I relate my preparation so make sure it's even everywhere and uh, reduce the, uh, the 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 facial incisor or lingual side uh, everywhere so I can fit my restoration. But also it's uh, what my my preparation point is here that uh, I usually do a little bit bevel at the incisal one third, a little bit less. So when I probably deliver my restoration, especially if it's translucency, I won't be able to see a uh, transition between my incisal angle and the restorative stages or incisal part of it. The also the most important here is um, when we try to um, prep this is special from the lingual side most of us um, neglect this part of it and uh, sometimes um, uh, your restoration sometimes might break because there is not enough space for the lower T's with envelope of motion um, you know to, to fit and uh, when we deliver the restoration and uh, <clears throat> we have to cut a lot and sometimes this area became very thin so I like them uh, my prep and I see that I have enough um, uh, space uh, for uh, my restorative material to fit in and I will proceed right now with the model. So the model is ready to, and um, we marginate the the prep and sometimes what I want to do is uh, I want to make sure it's uh, where my margins are. So when I display I put a of a biocopy and I usually try to click the uh, treat the model so I want to make sure it's a way my margins are according to the you know, soft tissue and also evaluate my preparation if I see any discrepancy or has to be something has to be done I'll go back and reprep and then I rescan uh, the images again so this is my prep and uh, what we do right now is um, when I draw the margins, I usually, especially in the front teeth, I usually do on high intensity um, mode. And um, let's define the insertion axis. And um, when we're done with it, we click OK and we click the copy line. So if your insertion axis and all the images are ready, so you don't even need them uh, to adjust your copy line. You see, it looks beautiful, nice. Um, and let's proceed with it. So we got the proposal, nice proposal. I don't see any uh, major problems here. And um, so with a few a little bit adjustments here so we can um, correct the problem. Have a little bit deficiency right here in the front. I can adjust a little bit area right here. And the rest uh, probably can be done right in the patient's mouth. So this is a meal preview that's, um, and you can see that's according to real life, that's how much um, the dentin will probably can be sh shown. So, it's a little bit too far to the incisal, so I'm going to make some kind of adjustment and we're going to move the block a little bit in a position where I like to keep it that way so it will be um, almost the same with the adjacent teeth. Now crown is done and um, what I start before I start using uh, bonding on my uh, on my toes and before I cement my crown I use microabrasion and I start from a cervical part 
Why? Because I can control it to so make sure it will not do the bleeding on the gingiva and make sure it's so when I uh, cement my crown my preparation is, is clean because sometimes we have a bleeding and sometimes we use different uh, chemical materials like a hemostatic agent so uh, the microabrasion is uh, served as a reversible agent and it's gonna help us uh, to get uh, the better bonding so what I do is uh, when I use relax uh, relax ultimate cement and uh, trying to put put the bonding all around the tooth structure and also not using um, air water syringe to evaporate all the residue from the or excess of the bonding material I use my high speed suction so when I, when I put the bonding my uh, system holding high speed suction and make sure it uh, will take all the volatile materials out of the preparation so when the bonding is done we cement the crown and I use um, a polishing paste um, to go around the tooth structure um, and also it's um, going around at the crown so make sure there is no residue left from the cement this um, final x-ray and um, this is the final picture thank you very much